Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we're going to be looking at the male reproductive system. And the male reproductive system is going to include structures which will be mostly allowing for sperm production, male hormone production, sperm maturation as well as storage, and then sperm delivery and expulsion from the body. So, the male reproductive system is mostly going to be centralized around a structure called the testis. So the testis is this structure right here. It is going to be surrounded by and contained inside of a stru another, another, another structure called the scrotum. And you can see the scrotum as a two-pouch sac, which is going to individually hold each of the testes. So you have the two testes here within the scrotum here. Now there are a couple more structures regarding the testis I should be familiar with. The first of which you can see in red so in the outside of the scrotum, that is called the cremaster muscle. And then one of which you can see on the very outside of the testis in white, this is called the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea will also go within the testis to make these segmented regions inside as well. Now inside of the testis, that is where we're going to have sperm as well as hormone production. But if you look closely, it's going to start in a specific part called the seminiferous tubules. These right here are the seminiferous tubules, these convoluted tubes. And you can see it a little bit more clearly in this big testis here. So this is one testis. These convoluted tubes, which you can see that are kind of segmented, these are the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules will be where sperm is produced, and then it will lead into this region after after the convoluted part, which is kind of straight, which luckily is called the straight tubules. So straight tubules will then lead to this network or mesh-like structure of tubes. This is called the reti testis. After the reti testis, you can see that there is another kind of straight portion. These are called efferent ductules. So efferent ductules will be, come after the reti testis, leading to this whole region. This whole region is where sperm is going to be stored. This is called the epididymis. So while sperm is not leaving the body, it will be stored and kept here inside of the epididymis. But during arousal and during ejaculation, that is where sperm will then start to move into the next structure in order for it to leave the body. And the first structure which it will go through is called the vas deferens. So after the epididymis, starting down here, this is the vas deferens. The vas deferens is going to be a long tube, and you can only see a part of it here, so we're going to go back to the other model. But you can see the epididymis here, and then the vas deferens here. And it will continue to go up and around the pelvis, up and around the top of the bladder, to the back of the bladder over here. And something to keep in mind is that you have two of these vas deferens. You have one and two for both sides. And as it reaches the back of the, of the bladder over here, it is going to join together to make up another tube called the ejaculatory duct. And that ejaculatory duct is going to enter the back of this little walnut-sized gland called the prostate gland. Now before we go any further, there's also a couple more glands which you should be aware of called the seminal vesicles. So this is the seminal vesicle. You can see one of, one of them here. But there's another one on the other side which you can't really see. But the seminal vesicle is going to be secreting into, this, into the ejaculatory duct and it's going to produce or provide seminal fluid which is actually the majority of the volume of the ejaculate. So the seminal vesicle as well as the sperm will go into the ejaculatory duct and if we remove this you'll be able to see inside of the prostate gland here and you could see a small part of the ejaculatory duct. So here is the prostate gland, here is the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct will then lead to another tube, which you can see here. And you can, be able, and you can follow it down from the bladder here, all the way down to the end of the penis. So this tube is called the urethra, and the urethra is going to allow for sperm as well as urine to be expelled from the body. Now in the lab, you're going to need to know three different regions of the urethra, the first of which is located here, called the prostatic urethra. Luckily, because it is found within the prostate, so 
only this part that is within the prostate is the prostatic urethra. And then you get to this short portion right here within this kind of red region, which is called the urogenital diaphragm. This is where you're going to have the membranous urethra. And then from the membranous urethra, it will lead into the penile urethra, which is going to go towards or throughout the penis to, well, exit the body. So prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, penile urethra. Now there's one more gland that you should be able to find here, which you can't really see from that view, but if you look like from this view and then look underneath, this gland right here is going to be secreting into the urethra as well. This little gland is called the bulbal urethral gland, and it is going to be secreting into the urethra in order to clean out as well as lubricate the urethra. So keep in mind that there is urine residue that you'll find there, and you need to clean that, or you want to clean that out before ejaculation. So you can see it a little bit better in this view here. Here is the penile urethra, which is the tube running along the length of the penis. These two glands, these small kind of P-shaped glands, are the bulbal urethral glands. They are secreting into the urethra to lubricate and clean it out. Now, back, going back to this other model, we could talk about probably the part of the male reproductive system that most people are very familiar with, that is the penis. So, this is the penis. The penis is going to have different types of tissues inside of it. The first of which we already talked about, which is the penile urethra. So the tube inside of the penis is the penile urethra. You can see that here. It is also known as the spongy urethra. The reason why it's called the spongy urethra as well is because it's within the corpus spongiosum. So you can see this type of tissue surrounding the urethra or the penile urethra. This specifically is called spongy or corpus spongiosum. It is, like its name suggests, a little bit spongy, but it'll be surrounding and kind of supporting the urethra. Over here, you have a different type of tissue. You can see that it looks a little bit different from the corpus spongiosum. This is called the corpus cavernosum. The corpus cavernosum is in large going to be helping to allow for an erection of the penis and it will help with filling up with blood so that the penis can become erect. So here is the corpus cavernosum on the dorsal side of the penis or the superior side of the penis and then down here surrounding the urethra is the corpus spongiosum. Now there's one more part within the penis which is called the glans penis. So the distal end of the, of the penis is called the glans penis here. It's like the end of the penis. So this is going to be a highly sensitive region of the penis, and it's a little bit different from the rest of the penis as well. You can see it a little bit better if we put the rest of the model together. Here, this is the glans penis here. It's a little bit different from the rest, it's also going to be a bit spongy, kind of like the corpus spongiosum. Now, this model doesn't have it, but there's also, there's also a covering of the glans penis called the prepuce, which should be covering the glans penis when the penis is flaccid. But because the prepuce is not here or it's not present, the glans penis is exposed. We do have a model in lab that has the prepuce, so make sure that you take a look at that. But that's it for the male reproductive system. Thank you for listening, and good luck.